Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. And we got Luke Simons. Like diamonds. Oh, the kids still got it. So we're talking about just some quick and easy, simple ways to find redfish and speckled trout and snook in this fall transition time. This and is flounder. An, and flounder yeah. too, and flounder. This is an interesting time in what we've noticed in our community. So if you're watching this video, uh, we've got the our insider community. This is our private club of uh, you know the like it's kind of like a mixture between facebook and like a forum so it's well organized where you can find everything you need in your region etc and even by species um but it also feels and acts like facebook where it's super easy to use and doesn't seem clunky like an old school forum and i've seen two things happen this past week like luke go back to that one with that i think that was our member noah yeah, uh, noah. yeah he's in a tournament here and he's crushing redfish right so i've seen people are basically saying man i'm having the best bite ever uh, and I, and then the opposite, I've seen like quite a few people saying, man, I just, I've got skunked the last couple of trips here. I'm trying to figure out this fall transition, all the fish that were there just two weeks ago in the kind of the late summer are now gone. Where the heck are they? And so we want to do this podcast for you to help you find those feeding zones faster than ever. So we're going to talk about the types of spots, not just GPS spots because fish do move and, uh, you know, they have tails and no fences. Uh, and we'll also talk a little bit about, you know, smart fishing spots. It's now an app. If you uh, don't know, it is now officially an app in the app store. And we've combined smart fishing tides with smart fishing spots. So everything is right there on one main dashboard. It is amazing. So Luke, uh, there's another person caught what four different redfish there. And, yeah. Uh, that was in Savannah, Georgia. Yeah. And so yeah, fall is the time when you find the fish, it can be extremely good. Um, and, but if you're not in the right types of zones, you're going to minimize the odds of finding them. And it's, and, and it's actually surprisingly easy as long as you just simplify it down. Like, like no earlier caught a, a good slam. There's a lot of people catching a bunch of slams. Um, but yeah, just as you mentioned, there's, there's some, um, who are, who are just struggling and just kind of having, uh, you know, we all get into some, some t situations where we just feel like nothing's working and, uh, and we'll just go over kind of some easy fixes, to make sure there's some some rod bin in action. Yep. So what are the fixes there, Lukey? Where if you were telling someone who's fishing in let's just say Tampa area this coming weekend, what types of spots would you tell them to go look at? Yeah. So we'll start with just with just kind of open bay type situation. So what we'll use the Tampa as the example, but the same premise holds true regardless. And and the key, just to just to get some action, I, I was I would recommend just start with trout, because trout are much more predictable. They're often going to be holding in deeper water, so that you don't have to have a shallow draft boat or uh, or a trolling motor. You don't have to have anything fancy. Trout is the one. This that's what I use as my backup plan. I, I typically go for reds and snook first because I want to catch a slam. Reds and snook are a little bit tougher. And so I go after those first and then, then the trout is like this, this recipe we're going to show is basically the trout is going to be a, a, you can do it in your sleep. If you just follow this, this recipe for bays and the recipe is really like, given that it's fall, there's just a lot of bait fish moving around. Let me get a better map here. Go to the high res satellite. Ooh, that's usually the best. So given that it's fall, there's a lot of bait fish that's just getting flush in and out. There's, there's a lot of food on the move. And trout want to eat as easily as possible. And so what they do is they typically hold on the outside edges of the grass flats. Like a, so of the bays, if you have this big bay, basically target any outside edge of grass and you're going to catch trout. It's really not a matter of if, it's how many. In many cases, you can catch an absolute ton. And then you can just drift it. You don't have to have a trolling motor. Uh, you can even troll. I catch a bunch of just trolling paddle tails, whether, again, whether it's this grass flat Sometimes they're on the far end. Sometimes they get up here in the, the intersections. But if you just spend 15, 20 minutes searching the edges of, of flats like this, you're going to catch trout. And once you find them, there's usually going to be a lot of them there. So, so that is typically the easiest way to go out and catch a bunch of fish. And the same thing holds true, right? This, this first spot we looked at is, uh, is really just for, for boaters or just boat access. But again, there's a lot of parks 
and same thing, right? Just find a park that has some seagrass and, and on a low tide, especially you can go wade and fish the edge of it. There's going to be trout there. And it's, uh, you don't have to have live bait. You don't have anything fancy. It's really about finding the fish. They're going to be active. I just throw a little three inch paddle tail, like the slam shady 2.0 on a quarter ounce jig head is pretty hard to beat. Whether you're trolling or casting, it is, uh, it just flat out gets results. Don't forget the Dr. Juice. Dr. Juice certainly helps. Correct. But yeah, that and, is uh, it. That that's the that's, it. that's been our secret weapon is that Slam Shady 2.0. It's not the lure to catch every fish in the world, although it has. But for trout, I think that's just the easy anyone can do it. You can straight retrieve, you put it on a jig head. It's not that complicated. You just got to find the spot first. And and if they're there, you will catch them. Yeah, and 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 again, whether you're for a boat or not. So here's just an example of a of a good spot. Uh, we were out a boat. I guess this is this is this time last year. The boat was in the shop, wanted to go fishing, so we just went out and waited this bank right here. And sure enough, we caught trout and, and flounder. Um, so just you know, when you target areas like this, there's just going to be a lot of fish. The fact that all the bait is on the move, the bait is flushing around all all these these flats, and there's going to be a lot of different predators that patrol this outer edge. Um, Bycatch is going to be Spanish mackerel. There's actually some really big ones uh, flowing through right now. Um, there'll be flounder here, as we mentioned. Uh, even pompano. You have odds of pompano. Uh, just a variety of fish. Sometimes some late tarpon uh, and, and cobia patrolling as well. So it's just a fun way to fish. And, and as I mentioned before, it is, it is, I can't say it's impossible to get skunk, but it is very rare that there's a skunk trip if this is the focus, right? Just focusing on all these edges of the flats where there's a channel and then shallow grass flats that goes up to it, there's going to be fish patrolling it. It's just a matter of how many and then what species. And this works everywhere. If you're sitting there saying, oh, this is a Florida thing. It's not. I mean, the beauty of that community that Luke was in earlier is that we have members. Texas is our, our fastest growing and now the second largest uh, membership state by far. And then you got the Carolinas and everywhere in between Georgia's growing like crazy. And we're seeing the same reports from our members in those other States that are catching trout on very similar types of spots. Not all of them have grass flats, but they all have some sort of flats that meet some sort of channel or an area that has a depth change. It could be a Creek, it could be anything. And that's where they're catching the trout. And that's the beauty of that community is we have our members because it's behind a paywall, but it's private and not out there like on Facebook or anything. One, it's positive people who are willing to share, but two, they're willing to share a lot because it's not out there for everyone to see. So if you're a member, spend some time in that community. Luke, I mean, who's a pretty accomplished angler, many of our full-time guides, even Peter Deeks is in there looking to see what is happening in terms of different trends. Everyone who's smart and trying to constantly get better and constantly having that little edge, they're in that community. We have full-time guides who are in our community every week reading to see what is going on. Everyone in there is trying to learn just a little bit. Some people are trying to learn a lot bit more, but everyone in there is trying to learn just a little bit more every single time they're in there. And it's such a valuable resource because there's new reports going up you know, every five to 10 minutes. So that's community.saltstrong.com. Of course, you have to have an insider membership to get in there. If you're not a member, what the heck are you waiting on? But for your members, spend some time in there. So sorry, Luke, I wanted to make sure we hammered that because I, I, I do hear from members that shoot us emails and I look and like they've never once been in the community because we track all that stuff. I'm like, all right, we'll go to the community. You literally have a region. That is where all the fishing reports for your area are being posted. And there's tons of them. Your answer many times is right there in that community. Yeah. And so this is an example of the same type of strategy just to a different environment. And so this is up in the Jacksonville area. But again, this is just really just any sort of, of river system slash marsh system. This is the strategy. So on the bays, it's find the edges of the grass that comes up to channels, right? Find that water flow, find the structure that's by the water flow. And that's where many predators are going to be holding this time of the year because all this bait fish is moving in and out. So that's the strategy that, that is all encompassing. And so that strategy applied to this, uh, to a river system. We'll, we'll look here. Um, and it's this, it's the same thing. Instead of looking for seagrass zones, which there, you know, there really isn't seagrass in many um, marsh type areas, it's now looking for for oysters 
uh, you know, structure, some sort of structure with current flow. So in this case, there's just a lot of oysters and there's a whole lot of creeks. And so if think if you're a predator, right? If you're a trout or even a redfish or a flounder, you want to be holding in a spot that you have safety from predators like dolphin while having food source coming your way. And so the same premise holds true. Now we're just looking for oysters and a huge shortcut as a total game changer is this oyster layer. And so this is on smart fishing spots. We have the high res satellite. So you can see it's a actually really good view um, for this area that the water is typically murky. But the game changer here is using this oyster layer. All the oysters will just pop, right? That have all these, this white is all oysters. And the key now is just finding oysters, again, that are close to the current flow, the main source of, of water movement, ideally pretty close to the big water, meaning in this case, the Atlantic. So what I like to do when going to areas like this or even coaching people in areas like this is start with the big water. Okay, where is all the, the fresh water coming in and, and all the bait moving through? And then look for oysters that are, that are in areas that have points, especially spots like this where there's a lot of little feeder creeks emptying out. You have the, all these creeks, each one has their own individual points at the creek and you have oysters sitting out in front of them. That is a ton of structure that will hold a lot of life and there's a lot of current flow going through here. So just naturally predators that are on the move when the trout are moving back and forth, same with flounder, same with redfish, when they're moving back and forth, they're gonna spend the most time in spots like this, right? They're kind of boring shorelines, like this boring shoreline, not much there, not much there for them. So they're gonna keep moving. And as soon as they get to a spot like this, that's where they're gonna stay for quite a while and because they have no reason to leave, right? You have protection and food, why would they go anywhere else? So look for spots like this, Here's another example. It's like a nice little, nice little cut right through here. And you have some oysters going up the way. This is again, all these are ideal types of spots. And, and so here's another example of a pretty good looking spot. This is not quite as attractive for just max fish catching because it's at the back end of a bay. So this will probably be really good for redfish. If you're just going after redfish, this would be great. But if you're going after, let's just not get skunked today and catch a lot of just whatever bites, hitting the points is a much smarter play. So instead of going way back in this in this bay, right here would be the the statistically, you know, uh, the, the spot that statistically is going to have the most feeding fish because it's by the current flow. All that current moving the bait is going up against this structure where the predators want to be holding, and this is where they're going to be. It's really simple as that. So having this oyster layer is in my opinion, the biggest game changer for inshore fishing that, that at least I've ever, I've ever seen. Yeah. It's huge. Um, Heck I'd, I'd eat there. It. Yeah. I'd eat there too. And, hmm. and, and just looking at marshes, right. So we have this big marsh system. And so the same thing holds true, right? This is, you know, it's not quite winter. We don't have to go way back up into the backwaters of a marsh. Just focus on the zones that are near the main current flow that also have structure, right? In this case, that also have oysters, especially oysters on points like this. If you can have a oysters on a point or a little uh, constriction zone where that water is getting constricted, that's gonna hold fish. Not everyone obviously is gonna have a ton of fish, but if you pick six of them, the odds are that at least, at least I would say two or three are gonna have a good amount of action. And again, just follow that simple strategy. It is very rare that you're, that you're not gonna catch something. 90 10 zone baby all right that's yep. helpful so that's i know you kind of already transitioned a little bit into some redfish but the trout hopefully that's clear for you on just making sure you're not getting skunked because that luke's point is correct like if you just target and focus on these types of spot in your area in this fall transition you're going to catch trout i mean they're they're there they're not that hard. There shouldn't be a reason we're getting skunked. Um, redfish a little bit tougher, right? Uh, snook can be a little bit tougher. Flounder can be a little bit tougher. Let's let's talk about redfish in general because I I know one of the posts um, it was a member in that Clearwater area. One was like South Tampa, like you know, like Ruskin, an area that you know you spend some time in. One was like in South Carolina. What what types of spots in general? are you seeing these big schools of reds that are kind of coming in and in the month of October and in November in general? 
Well, the redfish are going to be tougher. So the spots we've talked about, this is basically weather. It, it's it's it works regardless of what the weather's doing, and it's just it's just predictable. If if you have if you know uh, if you just have to if you want to get out and just not have to think or not have to worry about recent trends and exactly what the weather's doing, what we just talked about is what you should do just to catch something, to catch some catch some fish. If you're specifically going after red fish, especially schools of reds, it gets a little bit more complex. That's when you really need to know the kind of the recent the, the recent data. Like if you've been following our weekend game plans, um, the the action is dependent based on what the weather's doing. Because when it's really calm and nice, the, the red fish that I've been catching in those conditions have been super shallow. Um, because it's nice, they're comfortable. The, the shallows are no longer hot. There's a lot of food up in the shallows. And when the redfish find the food there, it's easier to catch, right? The fish, you know, if they're going after mullet, mullet don't really have as much, uh, much, much area to, to get away from. So I've been catching a lot of my, my reds, like my schooling reds have been in water that I'm like barely floating over. Like, like the other day I was in the, we have a, the 24 foot uh, pathfinder. I literally had to push the boat over like a slight hump to get to where the redfish were. And they were just waking. Like it, as soon as I found them, I could see them waking, and I and I started to catch them there. So when the weather's nice, they're going to be up there super shallow. But when the weather, when a cold front comes in, they'll often push off, and uh, and they'll go off close to the area, but in deeper water. So if there's a what is it? What does that be specific? What does deeper water mean to you? So from deeper one water to... means more than in the in the in the really comfortable time. It's like two feet of water or less in most cases. At least that's what I've been seeing. Um, and then once uh, the cold front comes, they'll push off into some nearby water that's at least three, four feet deep. So we'll just use this example, this area as an example. So this back cove, this is probably shallow. I can actually, uh, we can actually see for certain. Yeah. So this back cove, we have the marine chart. This is very shallow. It's not even registering, but there's a lot of oysters and marsh. So on the nice weather, if I'm going after redfish, I'm more excited about going way back up here into this, into all these oysters, knowing that with all this structure, there's got to be a ton of crabs, shrimp, bunch of mullet, mud minnows. There's a lot of life that's going to be holding in areas like this. And so as soon as that water, you know, there's big tidal swings here, but as soon as this, there's at least, you know, 12 inches of water over this territory, those redfish that are hungry, they're going to be going up here to, to, to feed. Right, there's because there's gonna be so much food, and so I want to be I want to be there with them. And so this is when I would be if it's nice weather, I'd be targeting this super shallow water uh, near all this structure. And then obviously as the tide comes up, fish closer to it or on top of it. And as the as the water goes down, then you know start flushing out with them. But if there's a cold front that just comes through, now I'm I'm going out more towards the the deeper zones, right? Knowing that those fish really are, are not going to be very comfortable in the shallow water when it gets cold they're going to naturally just kind of push off into some deeper water they're not going to go 20 miles away but they'll you know they'll at least push off into some some nearby area that is more comfortable to them again ideally an area that has good structure would just with a little bit more depth and so again spots like this would be would actually be really good after cold fronts and now you can still trying to get close to in this example, if you're if you're watching, so let's make sure we do a good job of um, letting people visualize what you're seeing. So it's just kind of like a little cove with points and oysters that's also somewhat in the big scheme of things close to uh, to an inlet or, you know, uh, uh, right. Yeah. And again, nothing. And I've never fished here, so I don't know as good or not. So don't like don't focus about this particular spot. There's a once you'll once you start doing this you'll start seeing okay there's like a, there's just a million spots to try out so uh so nothing crazy special about this you can just tell that they're there this map isn't isn't very uh detailed yet we're gonna we're updating this but there's definitely some deeper water that's flowing through here we have a lot of backwater that all has to flush out through this channel and so there naturally will be again this will be a a, a protection zone for the fish when that weather starts cooling down when we get those cold those cold snaps that are starting to to push through. So that's just again just the type of the type of thing to look for. But, but I guys, guess what I'm trying to clarify is we're not 
we're not because I think some people think, oh, it's a cold front came through. I need to go way back in the back country in these back creeks. That's not the case, right? Just because uh, we're in the fall transition, you know, I because I, I had someone ask me that this morning, like, oh man, the, this must just screw up the fish. I was like, no, actually, it, it fires them up. Like the first couple of cold fronts, we might feel it, but we're talking about massive bodies of water. They don't just drop. 20 degrees in a, in a couple days, just because the weather does, the water takes a whole lot longer and many times it fires them up. So you don't need to go way, way, way back in a small little GNU as far back as you can see. A lot of these fish are still holding closer to inlets and, and passes, but in little coves near them. Is that more accurate? Yeah, and it's really about finding the life. Uh, so when you're going out, this is this is you're why- telling me to find I, a life or are you talking about find life? finding life, uh, get find, a life finding too. the food finding signs of life and whatever you're fishing because when you find when you find that the, the most fish are going to be wherever the life is like even like my, my best trout spots pretty much always lead me to the best redfish zones the trout like in tampa bay the trout would just be holding on the outside edges of the of the flats but given that there's all the trout there that means there's a lot of food and redfish just prefer shallower water than trout. So it just makes sense that there, there's going to be a lot of redfish as I push up shallower. And in most cases, that's true. Um, if there's a if there's a good trout flap and it's pushing up against the shoreline, if you want to catch redfish and snook and stop catching trout, just go toward the shore as it gets shallower. As long as there's still food along the way, typically it'll just be shallow grass and just get shallower, shallower, shallower. Is if you just do that, the reds and snook will usually be um, kind of intermixed, but they'll usually start catching more reds and snook as you catch fewer trout. So some people, oh man, I've been catching, I caught forty trout last, uh, you know, last Saturday. Couldn't get find any reds or trout or, or snook. Hey, the answer typically is, hey, just go shallower from wherever you were, and there will usually be snook and reds there, snook or reds. That's a great tip. So find the food in the fall and you're probably going to be catching some good fish but vice versa like sometimes the food moves around this is the, the challenge and it's, there are probably one weekend where there's just loads of mullet in here and the fishing's awesome and then the next weekend they're all gone right they've gone somewhere else and so that's when fishing this is a total waste of time because when there's no food there the predators aren't gonna be there either so that's the importance of covering water in the fall which is why we did that that power fishing mini course that that just teaches how to 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 move fast and then know when to move and know when to stay and know when to speed up and know when to slow down. It it basically covers the the essentials and and that and again following that type of fishing that's basically what led me away from live bait and more to lures once I started doing that type of fishing because I realized hey like as long as I was like at least halfway decent at reading maps. And picking out a half dozen good spots, I can fish them way faster and more efficient with lures than I can with live bait. And I got to the point where I'm now catching more fish per hour more consistently with lures and live bait. And so now it's like, now it's like painful for me to take live bait out because I know I'm just not moving as fast as I should be. Um, and now I can't use top water. Like it's uh, just all the stuff that I've kind of began to, to like more than anything I can't do anymore. And, uh, and if anybody's at that situation, like, like I was where like, I like, like Joe, I remember like we would go out and like, we wouldn't go fishing until we had a full live well full of bait. Even if it took us an hour to catch them, like we, we had to catch live bait first or we had to go buy it. And if we didn't have it, like we just like our minds just were like, man, like we're not going to catch anything. We're wasting our yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but if you're, if you're like that, now's the time to try lures. Um, so this is definitely the season to, to, if you want it, if you really want to get better at lures and, and not be relying on live bait, now's the time to force yourself. It's hard to do both. So you have to do one or the other. They have two different strategies. Uh, but now's the time to to hang up the live bait and just focus on lures. Just take like one or two lures and just go out there and just and just move around fast. And you'll eventually start to pick out the precise areas that are uh, that are most likely going to have the most fish. Yeah, and if you look at our weekend game plans, like every every Friday we have to do weekend game plan for members. And if you watch those videos, that's going to pinpoint the precise types of spots to look for based on the conditions. As mentioned before, so as the fronts come and come and go, the fish are going to move accordingly. And so we'll just uh, we'll just make sure to point you in the right direction to make sure that you're putting yourself 
in the areas that are most likely going to have the most fish. And as long as you do that, it doesn't really matter what you're using you're to be catching more fish. Yep. Yeah. We do it every, every single Friday for our members. They get a video similar to this for every single state. Um, just showing you what types of spots fish and to, to clarify when Luke said, you can't do both meaning live bait and lures. You can't do both at the same time very well. Right. You, you, I think a complete angler knows how to do all of it. There's a time when you want to fish with shrimp, like take the kids out. There's a time where you want to just go get, you know, a couple dozen shrimp and, uh, you know, sit at a bridge or somewhere with a, some structure like a dock and catch snapper and stuff, just to get a bunch of tight lines. Cause kids, let's face it, don't have the patience to do what you're talking about doing, which is, you know, go hit a bunch of different spots and kind of power fishing. But uh, right. I, I'm with you. This, this is the time. This is the time where bait uh, is tougher to catch. Some of it goes away completely and just moves offshore. Uh, even some of the tackle stores sometimes have trouble getting things like shrimp and different baits. So this is definitely a time to do it. And remember it, for us and for a lot of anglers, especially in, in Florida, it seems like it's more of a predominantly live bait mentality. A lot of people just gave up in the winter and just assume, oh, you can't fish. But that's one of the best times. There's not as much competition. Uh, the fish are still eating last time I checked. And, um, and because so many people give up because they're relying on live bait, it's a really good opportunity to, to crush the fish. And like you said, you can use top water and, um, there's sight fishing opportunities. Water's clear. Like I, I think that fall and into the winter is, is a really cool time. Yeah. And, and, and for most like weekend warrior, if you're going out once a week or even like once a month or every other month, especially if you have like a weekend to go, I highly recommend doing lures the first day. And that way you can, you can actually go around and, and start to see where the most life is. And then once you know where the life is, then you can go and take live bait and just, and just spend your time in areas that you already know there's life Cause you were just there yesterday. Um, it gets really tough. You know, if you go from one weekend to the other, the weather is, is just fluctuating a lot. You will get a cold front, the water just plummets, goes way down and, and temperature wise. And then after a few days of sunshine, it goes back up. So those fish are, are moving around a lot. And uh, so this is when it's tougher to know exactly where they're going to be, which again is, is the, is the benefit of power fishing so that you can go check a bunch of spots quick. But yeah, if, uh, once you know where the fish are, it's, it's hard to argue that, that, that live bait is going to catch, catch less fish. It, it, the live bait will catch more at that. You just have to know, where the bait is or in or where you can buy it and most importantly though where those fish are so that you're not just uh not just guessing and going to a to a dead zone and wasting time yep and then finally we want to remind you that smart fishing spots is now an app you can go download it in the app store you use your same username and password as you do for your insider club it's free to all members and um, i'm holding it up here uh, so you can see it the big change, there's quite a few, but one of the real big ones is that we combined smart fishing spots. These are all the different spots with smart fishing tides. And I don't know if, if you're watching, you can see that it, I'm looking from the, I'm watching myself do this. Um, you can see that as I scroll along, these spots start moving as well and change colors based on how hot they are going to be. Red being the hottest and then yellow and so forth. There's a little legend on the left uh, really, really helpful putting new spots in every month, new data coming every month. And this is updating daily. Now, actually it's updating hourly in many cases, uh, and they're all forecast, right? So as we get more and more data and it get, the days get closer, it becomes more and more accurate, like any type of forecast, but it goes out about 14 days. Really, really, really cool. And, uh, like I said, a lot of big things coming, even for land-based anglers, that's been probably one of the biggest requests. There's a ton of stuff for boat boaters and kayakers. And we're going to have a couple really cool little layers. As Luke showed earlier, there's plenty of spots to go fish and plenty of areas that are highlighted for land-based anglers. We want to do something, I'm just going to say next level that's uh, that's coming soon. So I'm really pumped for you guys to see that. It'll be, it'll be later this year, uh, but it will be uh, hopefully if all goes well this, uh, this year in 2023. So be on the lookout for that. And if you haven't joined us, go to saltstrong.com or you can even join through the app store. But if you want the free lures that come with, the membership is a welcome package, a welcome kit. Uh, you need to do it through our site. That's saltstrong.com. You'll see a little uh, join now or a pricing button, and uh, you can sign up right there and get access today. Anything else, Luke? Any other uh, types of spots or any other tips for this fall transition? 
no i mean just now is the time to get out there and, and and spend time on the water this is this is my personal favorite season this is when you have the highest odds of catching some really big redfish in super shallow water and in many cases once you find one if you find one school there could be a hundred of them in there and however many people you have on the boat is how many you're going to have hooked up at one time it is awesome and it's just a matter again follow the game plans that we do every friday that'll help make sure that you're putting yourself in the right the right zones based on the conditions and then, you know, as you join, you'll have access to our, our courses, the Finding Spots Mastery course, the Position and Approach course, which a lot of people um, don't put enough focus on as far as how, once you know where they're probably going to be, how do you approach them most of, most efficiently? Um, you, once you go through those courses, you're going to 100% see an improvement in, in your results. And that's why we have the guarantee that we have, where we guarantee that you're going you're gonna to absolutely be catching more fish than ever before. And then number two is while saving money on all the tackle you need, we have a tackle store that you'll have, uh, you know, 20% or more discounts on everything but reels. And for reels, we can't discount those anymore, but we do have free line, free spooling of the line and free shipping anywhere in the U.S. So most members save more money than the dues simply by buying the tackle they're already buying. So give it a shot. You have nothing to lose. And, uh, and again, we can't wait to, to see the platform and, and see what uh what you're catching on your upcoming trips. Yep. It's also fall, a good time to grow a mullet. Uh, well, a mullet too. A beard. It's a good time to grow a beard, you know, for all you mm-hmm. corporate guys and, and maybe gals, depending on how you identify. Uh it's a great time to grow a, a beard in the I'm fall. working on my mullet here. Wife wife looking, starting to get mad at it. Looking good, dude. Uh, that mullet t shirt Mike came up with. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's gold. <laughs> Uh, stay tuned for that so all right guys we appreciate you hopefully this was uh helpful we uh, will continue to do more and more of this stuff for our members as luke said every friday smart fishing game plan don't miss that don't miss all of the cool stuff happening in the community and we give away like a thousand dollars or more a free tackle every month to members who are just active in the community no brainer so go join us today if you're already a member make sure to be in the community.saltstrong.com Otherwise, we'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Peace. See you.